welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. We have a friend of the show, Adam Holland. How are you? Welcome back. What's happening? I'm thank you for having me back my second time on this great show. Right. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. No, no People are going to start talking. You're always welcome. Yeah, they, they will. Here. Yes. That's That's okay. A, it's okay. Fan. No, you, you you were great on the you know you were great on our first round with the Valentine stuff and uh, appreciate this genre of music and support it and I I appreciate that very much. I love guitars and I love all kinds of guitars and you are a great guitar player and a great guy. So this is Thank great. You. This is Thank great. You. And so and people that are watching or listening, I, I got it in my mailbox. I got a sneak preview of a new album. We call them albums anymore. Uh, <laughs> link I, is like I, I still digital call, music. I, I, I do I, too. I still call it an album, a collection of music. I don't know what, a, a collection of songs. I'm not sure what you call it. Even though it's not an old school vinyl album, I still call it an album. I still like albums and I will still call it to my dying breath. I won't argue with anybody about it because you can call it what you want, but to me, Exactly. I feel comfortable, and I, and I like and I like a collection of songs. I like a beginning and end. And if you do a little bit piecemeal to kind of fit in by doing singles, and then at the end you release as an album, like especially an older artist, I get it. Right. It makes sense. But I would, but I love the idea of an artist doing more than eventually at the end of a, of a music release to have a collection of songs as a fan. I agree with that. Listen, same thing with. You know, Steve Ogiery released his thing last year. He wanted to make a record. He's put out singles through the last decades. He's you know he's put out singles, 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 yeah. but he wanted to do a collection. I think a collection for an artist, me speaking from my point of view, especially this particular instrumental, there's so many different things happening that one song wouldn't represent what I was. Yeah. I think if you're an established if you're an established artist and you put out a single like you said or a single or two and it gets you to the next. But you're an established artist. They know what you. They know what it's about. If you're not, like I haven't. This is my first instrumental thing, so I wanted to yeah. put out a collection because it's it's all over the place. Diverse. It's like style wise, it's not just one thing. So I wanted a collection. And I, I appreciate. It. I think especially with, people, with this kind of music, you definitely need a collection. I mean, Steve can do singles because he's he's got that great voice. He can power ballad. You can kind right. of go in a genre where it's, it's actually more of a singles world. You can get away with it. Correct. Guitar, this album, I mean, a guitar, just, people listen to guitar music, I'm not going to go out hunting down one single, especially when no. you load it to your library. Right. You want to be invested in, in, in it. You want to put it in, listen to it, and then just do something, you know? Correct. That's how, that's how I, actually, I, that's sort of one of the inspirations behind this, making an instrumental. I, and it all goes back to that COVID, you know, I guess being home, I started to, you know, you're doing stuff around the house a lot and you just put on some background music. So I would put on mm -hmm. instrumental music. I love, I love a lot of the guitar stuff, you know, like the Andy Timmons, Steve Vai, you know, yep. Andy Woods, Satriani, all this. And then what's cool about either Spotify, Apple Music, they will cultivate like a so-and-so Steve Vai radio and all these different artists that I had never, had never even heard of these players. Yeah would come up, you know, I'm like, wow. And then, so then I'd go find him out on Instagram, you know, so that sort of triggered me to like, again, make the collection, but also do something where like, wow, maybe I could, I could, I could do something like that. It's that, that was sort of one of the inspirations to do it. Well, I was, I was pleased to, to hear of, you did a complete album too, because I mean, sometimes uh, when you're, when you do like a lot of rock albums, very few people are like later on are doing like dead doing a solo stuff. It usually starts out of being like a solo guitarist, you know, as like a hired gun for rock band, like back in the day, right. they had their solo stuff, kind of like an Ingve, kind of like always had his own thing, really. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, right. and but but to do it the opposite way and keep and keep growing as a musician, to me, is, it feels like a lot really fun. Just like a lot of artists now are, are, and just like you are with Steve and doing these different bands and projects, it's so it's like you know, I say healthy, like for a musician to still be friends and have other projects to go into, in and out of. And do well, this. no, I, I agree. You know what? I think it had to do also maybe with age. I think in the beginning, when you're a young band, like you're in a band and you want to stay true to that band, it's like a relationship. You want to be, you don't yeah. want to do solo things. As we get older and we've all done things already, that it's, it's like Steve does, it's so cool. He'll sing not on a lot of things, but not, he's selected, but he'll sing on a cool project with some established musicians if, if it's right, you know? Yeah. I'll, so if someone asks me to play on something, I'll do the same. And um, so it's it's okay, I think, as you get older to do different things, because it doesn't mean like you're leaving, oh, we're leaving the band. It's like, not you know, it's not that, that sort of mentality isn't, right. isn't, doesn't exist. It's just like, let's, 
if it feels right and it's cool, each thing helps the other thing. By the way, they all help. Yeah, it's, it's all it's it's all commingled. It really. Well, you you, so. you curate a different kind of audience, and to, to, you know, and I think there's definitely two different types of music lovers. I mean, I mean, really in general, there's really the deep dives, which is people like you and me, like musicians, music lovers. You know, get really music nerdy right. about it, and then there's the people that enjoy more like the singles, and they don't really know they know that artist, right? It's really two right. general markets, and then from there you can go country metals cream right. you know, I mean, then you can break right. it into it but you get a country artist or so and so like those aren't the single ones they you, know, you get people that really just deep dives they want the album they'll put on right. the, the music channel for this artist and it'll kick in if you like this artist you like right. this artist i get the same i thing like when they get those referrals I, I happen to love those referrals when i you know like example i love country music so like i'll put on like a keith urban radio and then all of a sudden I'll, yep. either whether it's pandora with spotify apple music and then you get like a, all music relating to that, or like mm-hmm. yacht rock. Right? You know, you put on and you get this cool yeah. hit. You know, I love that. So I like when they curate for me. I always find those helpful. Same thing on. Do you ever find like sometimes like the daily music, like a feed, like new music? I would never even know where to begin with new music. So I like when someone, if I hear something, I don't know what it is. I, I like it because I, I I don't yeah. know where to even look for new music. <laughs> I, I get okay with it. I'm a deep diver, and I'm the kind of person that like if they especially all the interviews, say I talk to somebody and I'm like, oh, I, I like whoever's your influence was. And then not only will go back and see who that influence was, if I don't know right. who it was, I'll see who that person's influence was. Right. I, and, right. and I'll be gone for like three weeks until like a daisy chain of influences. And then I know like five more artists now I didn't know before. I, so, I do the same. And I, I find, and then you find something, you're like, wow, how did I not hear about this great exactly. thing? You know? So, so yeah. And there's a lot of newer artists that I like, what's it, dirty honey and maybe like what the struts like they mm-hmm. sound old but they're like new i'm like well wow, that's cool like they're kind of like influenced by the oh, yeah. by you know classic type rock but yet they're new they're young new bands i find that inspiring and refreshing i, I like when i discover those i'm like is this new or old i can't tell and i like that I, i'm just happy when they're holding guitars and they're playing them at this point that, that's well, that's 100 percent. I, I definitely go for those you know there's no question i'm like is that a rock riff okay i'll support you that's cool <laughs> You know, that's what's I, like. Well, that's because well, we're we're old rockers. It's it's. I I agree. They have to be. I I do prefer when they're playing real guitars and playing those guitars. A hundred percent. And and that's what the, well, let's hop into the album. I mean, and that's the thing. I I love the live music thing. I love. I mean, you you're a live musician. You play out. You have to play your instruments. I I, love, I think it's great keyboard music too. But I'm saying I like piano or whatever. I'm saying I want it to be played and not just produced in right. a way that it's just regurgitated. It can be pop right. music and it can be very catchy. Right. But if you feel that in you, that's good for you. But I want you to right. feel it. I don't want you to try right. selling me something that you don't believe in. I don't want you chasing something. I want you doing it no, I and everyone else catching up to you and saying, I like it too. Right. Authenticity. Is the, I think that's the key. Right. I think, you know, that is the key. If someone, when you're going to, when you're going to see somebody, you want them not to be phoning it in. You want them to be passionate about it. So. Right. And that's when you get like a Billy Eilish type of situation across. where you're like, it's real. You feel like they're real in everything they do. Like Billy Eilish, you know. That's just a real, correct, authentic person about how you do Her it. Her vocal just is so it, it's so it's so great that like it like Adele. It's just it's the there's no yeah. mess. It's a real thing. You, it's not produced and slick and dancing. It's real music, and they believe in it. You know they believe in it. They won't do it if they don't believe in it. And I like that. Right. And that, so there is good pop music out there. I'm not. I'm just saying, but you know, it was the same thing back in the day when we were listening to rock stuff. You had a copy of a copy because they wanted to be like them. They weren't influenced by them. They were trying to be exactly like them, and they forgot the point of right. What made them that person? They just were trying to be that sound. They weren't trying to be the core of that sound that emulated right. it. And there is a difference. But R- Rapture is the name of the album. Is it April 5th, right? Is the release date? Yes, April 5th, correct. I want to focus. I guess sidetrack and talk about everything with you. No, it's all, it's, all, it's, all, it's all back to the music. It's all good. It all goes back to it with me. I, I, yeah. So I got to enjoy it. Nine tracks. Very different, though, each one. You yes. know, sometimes I go listen to it, go back, go, oh, wow, I was not expecting that. So it's not like it's just like a um it's not a metal album it's not a no. pop album um there's some funk in it there's um some dips some dive bombs you have some some shredding and some very beautiful acoustic style music it's got a lot of everything in it i appreciate you that know? thank you uh, and, you know, I, and you I have a you bunch mentioned... of it in one style too and you make it work that's the fun part in some of the songs you do like a lot like like what the funk you got a lot going on in there but you make it all work thank you i appreciate it i try like i said i this is my first instrumental record and i had never done one because i've always been more of a regular songwriter and where there's like chorus verse bridge a little breakdown solo 
three and a half, four minutes, and it's a real song, you know, so my brain works that way. So in making an instrumental song, I tried to keep it like, well, I don't want this to get boring and repeat the same thing 50, you know, you can, that's what I still wanted to make it a song, whether it was being the melody right. was a voice or a melody was a guitar. And that's why I really never had done an instrumental because I'm like, how do I even, I wasn't sure if I could do it. And, you know, back to the COVID world, when we were all stuck in the house, you know, in front of doing what we're doing now in front of a computer, I started to do these little one minute songs on Instagram, just as a thing to keep me busy and sort of a weird performance thing. I'd play along to a track and a few of those are what are, are like what the funk and um, tears of a bunch of those made it to become real songs. You know, so idol worship. So, and I think wow. summer, some summarize those that started out as one minute Instagram little jams that I just I embellished into legitimate songs. So, so write these though, like so, like when you do a smell, obviously these are the first thing for you. Usually, for instrumentals, there is a key melody line, guitar line theme. Correct. Right. There's a broken down version of a song with some there are some verses and some choruses in most songs anyhow. But there's also um, the, the vocal line is used the guitar line, but also in a lot of guitar music or instrumental music, just usually some other special rights and lefts, because otherwise, right. if, when there's no vocals and it's just wide open for the natural ear, for a lot of people that listen to music that aren't like musicians or play instruments, it's open. It's, it's like looking out a blank yard, and people like to have a lot of stuff right. in their yard. I kind of like the <laughs> landscape myself. But I'm not <laughs> the good, person that's buying the albums. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it can be beautiful just to look at the opening and you can appreciate all the different nuances in it, which is the instruments. But everyone's like, I need a flamingo. Or, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? They need something with the vo- that's what the vocals can you're, do. You're right. Well, you're right. Because so the th- I, I tried to approach it where like there is some melody line, which technically I guess would be the chorus. And then I guess where the verse in an instrumental or guitar record, this record, where the I guess verse would be I, I did maybe some guitar solos in that genre of the style of the song and kind of went back to the melody, which again was the chorus, then a bridge. So the bridge might take a full left turn, like some of them break down, some of them go on a, some of them stay, but some of them go on a tangent for a moment yeah. or two. I did try and keep them in the four minute range. I still kept my pop pop writer hat on. I, I, I can't, I just don't like long, you know, to me, I get I get bored, so I want to keep them as songs, as a you know. And you yeah. mentioned there are nine songs. There's one vocal song which I'm going to put out as a single a little bit later. I am gonna, so uh-huh. once I have the record out, then I'm going to start. Maybe I will put out a few singles, but but I'm going in reverse of what you mentioned. Once I uh-huh. have this established thing, then maybe I'll put out a vocal song. Maybe I'll put out another instrumental. I I will eventually though put out another instrumental full collection, but I may in between put a single or two out. So, so I've, I've heard, so what I've heard is this, the nine instrumentals. So the single, okay. I've not heard the vocal yet. Oh, okay. Then maybe I'm okay. Yeah. Cool. Who's, who's saying, is Steve singing on that one? I just, easy no, guess, I did. I, it's me. Oh, it's wow. Me. I didn't get to hear yeah. that. Oh. I, I thought that's why if you heard nine, I thought that's, I'll, I'll, by the way, I'll send it to you. It's, it's not a secret. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I yeah. thought it was in that folder. Okay. I'll, I'll no. get it to you. No, it's the link to the, uh, the, the page. So yeah, okay. I check okay. it out. I'll make sure you hear it. Unless I miss it. So that's awesome. I, I'm excited to hear that then. Um, with, yeah, so, what are you gonna, so with an album like this now, it's a different market out there too. And a lot of times when an artist is doing music, it's either A, they do it so they can tour, A, because the fans want it, because the right. economics of, of, a, of an album nowadays is not the same. Right. But financially, you can make them a little cheaper too. So there's a little right. give there's, and take. It's not right. There's not, there's not, there's no label. You, you can do it in your house and record it. I did have it mixed and mastered re- for real. So I, you know, I did spend some money on, on, you know, making it sound. I mixed a bunch myself. I had some other guys mix and I had someone master it professionally. So all the mi- different mixes would be cohesive and the levels and, and the proper EQ for the, for, you know, transmitting out into the world. Which I think support, I think having it professionally, and I think sometimes having somebody outside of you doing it also Correct. fresh ears, even if you don't take what they do, you at least have to listen to somebody. I also believe in recording live drums on right. rock albums still nowadays. I think you can do most yes. things remotely, but you got to have drums in a drum room and somebody recording it. I you agree. Know? And I, I, and I, and I, 
Yes, and I think having another, so on some of the songs, I did them all myself, mixed it, and on some songs, a lot, probably a, a good bunch, I collaborated with Gerard Zappa, who's my longtime friend and bandmate, and then on a couple of songs, I collaborated with uh, two producers and writers, this uh, a guy named John Birchie and a guy named Mark Cimino, and they helped me produce and, and write and mix some of those, some of the songs. Yeah, I saw G Zappa. So, I'm like, I know F Zappa. I know G Zappa. Exactly. I don't G -Zappa. know G Zappa. Gerard, Gerard. He's Gerard, you know, Valentine, Open Sky, Steve O'Jerry. He's been, he's been, we've been together in the trenches for a long time. So he, he is a great writer and really, he actually is stronger in the instrumental department than, so he, he had so many great ideas during, he, during COVID, he started experimenting with some loop based type of music, which is, a little more instrumental, a little more soundtrack. We were thinking about maybe, that was another thing. We were thinking about maybe doing some soundtrack work, some TV, you know, how to get some more instrumental, which also made this record evolve into what it is. And, and that's another reason why I wanted to have it out in the world, not only from a guitar point of view, but just to, let's say someone wanted to hear what, what, can, what can Adam Holland do to, as far as like a TV show, a soundtrack movie. This gives a sort of a diverse, spectrum of the things that I could do. Some moody stuff, some rock yeah. stuff, some acoustic stuff, some, you know, the different stuff, you know, different areas. I never so realized that was one of the reasons why I wanted to have it out in the world. How, how that world worked until I started doing the show, like how aggressive it is, like the, 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 the uh, TV movies, like doing the sound banks or whatever, like it's its own intense world yeah. for artists to, to get right. their songs in there. And, and that, that it's crazy. Right, so it's competitive, and it's it's, it's so interesting enough. Let's talk, talk about early on in COVID. Valentine got approached. We too much is never enough is going to be on a show called Firecracker in one of their episodes. I think it's a HBO show. It's about professional wrestling, not like professional sport, more Olympic types, you right. know, uh, athletic wrestling, not the spectacle of the, you know professional wrestling. So it was the first time we had something, you know, we've done some movie work back in the day, but this was all of a sudden happening now. We're like, wow, maybe there's some room for some other things. So that was, yeah. that really was one of the things Gerard and I wanted to start to explore. So this, this now out in the world is, a, even though it's, the vehicle is my guitar playing, there's a collection of songs out there that you could hear what I do yeah. for different sort of genres. So that was another reason why I wanted to put it out there for sort of, a, sort of like a, you know, like a, a marker of what, what what can Adam Holland do besides writing vocal pop songs? Here's some other things I, I do. So that was why I wanted to put out an instrumental record as well. It's, it's a good gig to get into. If you can get, if you can get into it, you get a couple on TV because you hear it all the time. I know I know I have blues. Right, blues no, but it's he does it full time. It's, he does like songs. It's, it's what he does full time. It's just songs for, you know, media. Right, and if you can do gig. that, Brad Gillis. Brad Gillis does a lot of it too. There's definitely guys who do it. So I am not in that genre, in that world, but I wouldn't mind getting into that world. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's good. It's good world, and I mean, you're you're in a good spot to get kind of little a little foot out there, a little more attention than somebody <laughs> out there. So you are in a good position too with this to kind of put it out there, you know, as a resume right, piece, I think, sort right. of, you know. Correct. I do have a good resume. I have some right. So I it, I agree with you, and I we have done some motion picture Valentine. I don't know if you remember, but we did a couple of songs on the soundtrack of Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. So we, we've done some That's movie right. stuff, but we have some, yeah, back, good old fashioned 80s. Yeah, I, you know, it's, I don't remember. The one thing I didn't do back then, I was really bad at getting soundtracks for, for most movies because even like, like one song on it, I, well, because it'd be like one song, I'm like, I hope they put it on their next album as a B side or, a, or, you know what I mean? Because right. I'm like, ah, oh, I, I, you know, I, right. I had limited money. If I was a kid, like nowadays with the internet, I don't even know how to survive with all this music. Like, I had to digest, like, I know this group of friends, was, like I said, uh, they come to punk music, it was a punk radio station, college station. I go to bed, I put three hour, uh, well, it was really crappy, three hour tapes in, I go to bed, wake up morning. I didn't know half the names of these songs growing up, but I know them, or like all my friends, we listen to rock, so we trade tapes and copy them because I didn't Wait, have the so money. You, hold on, so, to do that. so you would, that's pretty cool. So you would record overnight, like a, a genre, like a style, like a, a, a punk station or a college station, then listen to those songs. That's pretty. That's a good idea. I never thought about that. That's Very cool. So yeah, that's like, yeah. Well, that was in the day. That was my my internet. So, oh, it's I mean, so wild, right? 
I knew songs. So like later on, I'm like, oh, I know that song. And also I, knew, also I knew like a bunch of songs by like all the punk artists because I just didn't know the names because they weren't calling them out at the first. Right. And I had no right. I had no resource to, to to check them against either. So it was whatever they said. Right. And um, right, right. Isn't it wild it, now? Like someone mentions what it is great about technology and. I know people sometimes are the, the pay rate is much different for streaming than it used to be, you know, for a regular yeah. mechanical and performance, which having said that, you, you know, you're reaching, I mean, so many millions of people, I mean, someone just mentions, Hey, have you ever heard of this? And in mm -hmm. two seconds, you have the full catalog on your phone. You can go, okay. So it opens up, it opens up a, a world. It's just, it's, it's an incredible thing. I'm, I am personally a huge fan of the era of, of, having your, all these catalogs out there, you can just, mm -hmm. I mean, someone mentioned something I'd never heard of and boom, you, all of a sudden you could just go shuffle through, you know, 10 songs and it's just incredible. I, One I of the worst things I do is organizing my music. I, I'm constantly fixing it, deleting it, fixing it, adding music. It's like, a, it's, it's obsessed with me. It's just too much. I think I need help. I think I need where to go away to like a, do you do? a music. Oh, um, I, I used to do iTunes, do you, but then I, I was doing, um, I still um, also do a YouTube music, but YouTube music, I like it. There's a lot of different stuff in there you don't usually hear elsewhere, but it's really hard to organize. And you can't import. So back to iTunes. So I use a couple different things at this point. I don't use Spotify. Right. I have my, my platforms on Spotify, but I actually don't subscribe to it. I don't, I don't, cause I don't like commercials. I don't, I pay for commercials, not in YouTube. I don't like the commercials. That's what it comes down to. Understood. I, I pay for the, the Spotify, I guess I have some, I yeah. let you download things. So I, yeah. I do, I, I, you know, do a combination. I like Spotify. I'm, I'm, I like how they curate the things they, mm -hmm. they suggest for me. I, I'm, you know. But you don't, you can't control as much, can you? In it? I know like with, like with iTunes, I, they can refer it and I can also have a little more control over it. With like with the recommended stuff. I felt like when I did Spotify, I had less control over what I was listening to. Um, maybe been a I'm, while, not, I'm not, I can't. I'm not sure. So far, they've given me good suggestions. So that's, uh, uh, and that's good. And that's the thing, okay. there's so much out there to, to, to do that. And So and, much. Unbelievable how much content. It's incredible. So, but because for me, people like, my, yeah, people like myself is putting it out. It doesn't cost any, you know, you don't have to go to a major label to put out a record. You can just do it yourself, which is an incredible thing for an artist. It's really great. Liberating. I, I like the idea of the, the do-it-yourself. The most people can do it. I just think and I hope it, it flattens out. I think radio, first radio did it. And, 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 and well, on record labels, I always joke, I call them the banks, really ate themselves alive. They, got too, they both got too greedy <laughs> to the point where they, you know, even radio stations now aren't the same, you know. I've gone, I almost worked, worked for radio stations, but they have all these rules and stuff. Like you can't play certain songs. I mean, they have all these rules and the songs are controlled. I mean, there's no creativity in a radio station, you know. It was that I, way I, I, when you were a kid, a DJ could play the song they wanted to play. Then it, it got into, you know, ads and playlists and what and they could only play what they was added. They couldn't just play what they wanted. They had to play what was they were the format of their station. So it started to change. Now I don't even know what radio is. It who even do people know. listen to? It, you know, my family does. Serious XM. All my stuff. Oh yeah. I, I, well, I have so much music to listen to. I'm just for the right. show alone of previews. I've got like twenty or thirty albums a week sent to me. Right. I have. Right. I don't even have time to listen to it. Like, I'm really <laughs> taking time off. I'm taking time off. Like, listen to like all the previews. I'm just listening to music I like. Pre, like re, re listening to because I haven't. But um, but I think like when I, when, when I was in college, I went to school for like for recording and, and also music business and stuff. And we had a class on um, on on, on, uh, on radio. And the guy who works in radio says, you know, the first thing he told me this was like back in the late '80s, early '90s. He says, like literally, what radio is like. He goes, is they come in. I don't really have like a suitcase or bag of like of cocaine at the time. And that was how you got played. There was literally budgets for paying off the radio stations. Oh, there's no question. There's no question. They, they called it independent promotion, but it was right. flat out, you know, it was at the time nobody knew about it. So know, though. I mean, you know, because you're in the industry, but I mean, a lot of people still like they were doing it. What? I'm like, it was so known. It was taught in my class. In school, well, well, also school. it was also that's like the extreme. But there's also like example in our day back in the when there was CDs and albums and old and radio played a single with, that was the machine the mechanics of it. Yeah. Example: If you were on a big label, I'm making this up now, but let's say, okay, Van Halen singles coming out, and we want you know all these stations are going to add it, and they want that, and the promotion guy would be like, listen, I'll give you Van Halen, but you got to take these three other young bands. Yep. So that was the advantage, that was the sort of the, if you and had a big then band, the young though. bands, you had to, what? 
It had to be the big bands, though. Like, only very few bands could yes. do that, though. Carry the weight of the other. Because right. usually it was like, if you play this, I, I'll give you this down the road, or I'll give you these drugs, or I'll give you this cash. Right. And enough right. of those guys take it, you're going to get a number one album. <laughs> and you're like, what? But the, the, well, but, right. So then there was also, again, they called it independent promotion, but it was like a fund for whatever needed to happen, whatever, take the guy to dinner, do this, whatever you needed to do to grease yeah. the wheel. Sales is sales. You have to do what you have to do. So. And, and the and, bands and, and would that, go out and, we, you know. You guys got screwed. It was, it was, I, I don't know how many bands, how decent music made out. If you think about the record labels buying out the songs, the songwriting, the horrible contracts, you know, and the artists go out and do it. And then, and then the, the record labels were like this. It really was just a bunch of people that said, you know, the musicians kind of got strung through it and we were lucky that so many good artists survived. Then when, when, when it, uh, say grunge, but it, every 10 years, music recycles through. Correct. But the rock artists, the age group is that we're all about similar same age. And, and at that point, when everybody, when the rock part fell out, everybody was looking for jobs in music. And a lot of them kind of actually went more back into technology and, and video and radio and stuff and film and stuff. But that was their school. That was school. So like when you're touring and traveling and learning cover songs, that's like college and music, I think, for, for a musician. Those years, that's kind of like your music right. college. Because right, you're, right. you're putting it into time in. If you're learning music, if you're learning cover songs, if you do it enough, you're learning song structure. You're learning stuff without realizing you're learning. Right. If you if you if you take it right, so what happens at the end of that when they got out of their college and also that that music field wasn't open anymore for them, they have this education that they can't use. Right. I mean, it was they rock and roll, but my point is it was still an education that they were good at. They figured out how the game worked. Where do you go with that? All of a sudden they're like in their twenties, or whatever age you know, you're early to the right. late twenties, and all of a sudden your your your, your industry is gone. No, it definitely is an interesting when when genres change especially like so we lived through the 80s you know one day you know whatever you thought you whatever you did all of a sudden like don't ever do that again like you could right. so listen the good thing is time passes and it i don't know nostalgia but you know you, you're able to do what you do again but there's a time where what was cool one day is it's, it's five minutes it's like don't even right. don't even do that so which i think that but that happens that you know at every happens in a lot of different fields you know so people saturate on a certain thing and then something new a new sound or a new look or new something comes around and new technology or something yeah and then it change that's what you have to have and whatever's before that it becomes garbage right but now with either that you couldn't look back in the internet either and see, like nobody's putting the history together and i do want to say like looking back at all the music I, and i want to say i think the 80s i think were still to me the best and not because that was a certain time period for me just looking because I love the music of the fifties and doo-wop. I when I was in the eighties, I was listening to like the sixties and seventies music and nineties and stuff. But I think the time period though for, for songwriting in the eighties was so diverse. I don't think there was ever a time period where you had pop and rock and metal and overlapped and in different countries. Like it just felt like, you know, you could have like Twisted Sister and Cindy Lauper and like it was also different whether you like the artist or not, everybody had a different singing voice. You know I mean? no, there's no question the 80s was definitely image a was different for everybody you robust you robust you know diverse time it was, i i again because i did grow up through that i i really enjoyed it and experienced it i think i think though from so that's my perspective i agree with you i think though anybody from their own someone from the 70s might say well the 70s had i think you could pick each generation each decade and and find like find that i don't i maybe not as much in the 90s there's some great music in the 90s but i don't think it was quite as diverse but the 70s and the 80s really were like you know 80s yeah. because you know what i think the 80s you had like that 70s influence yep. all of a sudden you think you had some better technology and better sounds and recording and there was definitely some great oh yeah the seas of the 80s the, started in the 70s i agree with you i mean that, there's no right. doubt about that but i, I think mean, you're right though i think because it, it but it blossomed in the 80s i think you're right there was so many different div, so many different types of music in the 80s that are 80s music 80s pop 80s ballads yeah. 80s this you know 80s 80s hair stuff whatever you call it that you know so and yes. and because of diversities of of of, of um of like a like a Freddie zappa you, right. you can do a million different types of sounds you know what i mean so if that was developing in the 70s and and all those influences are are, are picking it up in the 80s you're gonna be like i could do all kinds of stuff i don't have to do one type of thing and actually, right, you know, right. genres are being mixed, you know? I mean, it was just for example, but right. you know what I'm saying? It, 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 so that was exciting. And I think, and that's why I find it more exciting sometimes like an artist that were still from that area, genre roughly, like an artist like you, 
it has a different core of a wellspring of not trying to, because you're not copying it. You grew up with all these influences that you kind of absorbed them. You hear it right. here, you hear it here. You know, um, now sometimes, you know, if you're doing rock music, they're going to go back and listen to everything. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, I give them props because they have to work hard to get the music done. Not hard, but you know what I'm saying? They got to put the effort in because it's not going to be everywhere they go. Do want to be a rock band nowadays? We were surrounded. I, right, we were. I, I find, I really be, didn't realize it, but looking back, maybe because of my children and listen, where I listen to, I love, I, I mean, I still love the 90s. Don't get me wrong. But the, not but, and the music of the 2000s, so the rock like that, like Killers, Paramore, yep. Fall Out Boy, this is, uh, I really find, and those bands are still yeah. thriving. They're still, and I, I really like that. That was like a real post 90s where like they could still get back into some synthesizer stuff and be a little more poppy yet with some crunchy guitars. So that I, I, I think that was a great era of music, the 2000s. I agree. I think because they leaned back though, Right. They honored who their icons were. I think in 2000, they were able to. He, yeah, and he embraced it. And then it goes back to what naturally could people do. Because I think, I think people like to be able to sit down and pick up a guitar and kind of sound like what they like. I think the problem is, and also I think in, in the late 90s, a lot of those artists died of, of the original <laughs> sound that we loved. We, we loved the sound of Nirvana. It was original. Kurt's gone. You know, you love Soundgarden. Right. I mean, all the original voices, the original voices of the, right. of the main bands, I mean, let's just say, you know, you got Soundgarden, Nirvana, and, you know, uh, Pearl Jam. It's kind of like having Black Sabbath, you know, Alice in Chains. It's kind of like having Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin. It's like having the basic originators of that time period. But imagine if all those artists just vanished after they did a couple albums. Right. I, I, like, never, th I, I never thought about that. That's interesting. Yeah. It is true. Me, I, well, like, I, I don't, I'm not sure if any other, that's a good point. I wonder if any other period had that same type of thing. That's. I never thought about that. Well, they, yeah, they, I always they, thought they were, they were the Black. Yeah. I mean, so I think when the originals died off, they were still good music, but I don't think you're going to see a Monsters of Brunch cruise. I mean, someone's going to do this now just to spite me. Okay. And bless you if you do it. Make your money. I'm not going no, to knock you I'm not saying it's not good singles. But there, no, there are still, there are 80s, albums. there are 90s tours and 90s cruises. There are, I'm not, they're called something else, but they are, they're there. Really? I'm telling you, there are 90s festivals, 90s tours. Yes. We're just not. I see some of the festivals. They, some of the there. festivals are, 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 uh, are very much more pop punk. Because punk has been really great. Like, punk has always survived. Punk is like a rock and roll cockroach. And I mean that in the best terms. Like, you just can't kill it. And I, and I love that. It'll, right. it'll change. It'll get, it'll get nasty and dirty. And then also it'll get clean and, you know, it'll look a little different. And then you'll have Green Day doing it, which is like great crafted pop songs, but they're fast with an attitude. And then it goes no, back they, to something else, old school again, like TSOL. Right. I mean, it allows right. you this. Green Day. Yes, I agree. And it's so cool you mentioned Green Day. They are, I, I, you know, they're one of those bands, you're like, wow, they really are a punk band, but yet with a great songwriter and a great vocalist. So like, it, it's really like a great, if you break it down, it's a great song. But oh, yeah. they're like doing it in the punk, with a punk attitude, and which makes it even cooler. That That's why they're so popular. They just really have great, it's a good song. Those songs are great. If you play them on an acoustic guitar, then you get that guy has got such a great Billy Joe. What an attitude! What a voice! He's got a really got a good voice. voice. He's, he's, he's a great rhythm guitar player, kind of like a, like a James Hetfield, like, right. you know, like an underrated. His totally. rhythm, I mean, it's just so underrated. And but to me, it was a Green Day songwriting is like kind of like taking the power of the Ramones with the harmonies of the Beatles. That's what I hear in it. And then they have a punk ethos, and then they, they I, you, the grass. You, that's why. They, that's like, why they're so perfect. huge. And they're yeah. I, you, exactly that's why it's so good because it's like holy crap it really is everything you just said it's like he's it's like punk with a good singer he's he's yeah. a genuinely good singer so yeah, and that, and that, pop that, songs that, is, a good song is a good song right so i yeah. so i agree that's why they're so great they're still great and it's pretty cool good for him it, it is I like they come they have a new record i think they're coming they're coming on tour this summer they're, they're back they've been doing a lot of press i've heard him on a bunch of the shows and some podcasts he uh, uh He's, you know, he's been through. They've all listen. Also, he's mature. He's been through a lot, and he's. Yes. They're a great. They're a great band. They deserve the credit and the success that they have. I'm, I love them. I do too. I think they're great. You know, I know we keep going back and forth. It's hard to to talk about. So this the album though is I really enjoy it. <laughs> yes, that's right. I, no, Thank no. You. This, this, this this is this is this is what I do. This is you know you've been on before. I we talk about everything. It's a conversation. You know, because absolutely you'll do other podcasts. I'm not knocking them, and a lot of them are really good at doing the soup to nuts. And I'm horrible at that. 
You know what I mean? We can go, you know, and sometimes we'll, we'll go into things. <laughs> if I, I'm not going to follow a journey or notes, I would, I would mess up. But it's important that we're talking about all these different types of music and how we love music. And that actually can play back into yes. the, the album because all this different music you like reflects in this album. 100%. So if you're enjoying this conversation right, really does. and you like a guitar, you're going to like this album. You know, it should sell that, itself. That, that's not, a great compliment. I appreciate that. You know, it's who you are. This mm -hmm. album is who I feel you are mus musically from what I've heard of your music in the past and from the handful of discussions we've had, you know, and hopefully we'll have more in the future, that I feel that you really kind of um, pull different different stuff out out of you. You know, I think, um, I know, I was listening to it, my wife was around, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm hearing a lot of different stuff. And you go back and listen to some more and hear different, like, the layers and stuff. You know, and like I good music that. I listen to, there's, there's, it's, it's not a one album to listen to. It's not, you know, a pop song where it's like, I know the song and help you through. You're not. Right. You're going to have to listen to it a few times and you're going to hear new things, which I is good. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. No, definitely. I, I appreciate that. And it is definitely a reflection of me. It's definitely a cult, a, you know, a culmination of all kinds of things. Like I said, there's some, you know, I have a big country part of my life. I love country music. There's definitely an ode to that in there, which is something that just comes naturally to me. And uh, some definitely heavier stuff and some and moody. I love I love the moody ethereal stuff. And mm -hmm. I love recording, so it's fun to record and try things and 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 what what's happening. You know, it's, it's we live in a great time of technology for create creativity. It really allows the artist to just try things. You can try fifty different takes, copy it and try it again. Change it. It's really great. It really is a you know the digital recording platforms are so great for creativity. They really are. I think, and if people are listening, they're like, oh, I'm not into Valentine's Mind, that kind of musical moment, or heavy this or that. This is also just a guitar album, so don't put yourself in, it's like, that. it's not a wooden genre album. I'm, I, mean, I like Valentine, but I'm not thinking anybody, be, you gotta listen to it open, if you, and you have music around you, you have to listen to this, because to me, also your guitar playing, and you, you have a certain tone, and you're a very clean player. So notes are always very clean and punchy. Um, I you. love the fact, that even, you, you know, you, you stuck a few dive bombs in there, but yet the songs have something else <laughs> going on in them. So you have not certain types of music, but you found a way to make it flow. So I don't feel like anything's forced in the music. It just feels like these are my influences. Right. I, I that's thank you. That's, I appreciate. It's a great compliment. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I think that yeah. is true. I just wanted. To, I just wanted to people. I wanted to have something out there. Again, there's many records of me as a songwriter and guitar player out in the world. Is Open Skies, Valentine, you know, a bunch of different Valentine, Steve O'Jerry, there's all kinds of stuff of me already out in the world. This is something where it's just me at the helm, you know, so I'm, and and people can, you know, go to it and say, okay, this is what this is what this guy's about. This is, I, oh, I get it. This is the different, this is his songwriting, his guitar playing, some vocal stuff, this is him. So it's, we live in a time where an artist can put out, you can express themselves. Yeah. And my feeling is, if people want to go hear it, they can. If they don't, they don't. That's the best. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to stop being jammed down someone's throat. But it's a it's available when people want to hear it or know about well, me or something yeah, like that. That's right, so cool. and it's a, it's a it's a slow burn. Like like my show. Sometimes the artists come out. I'll have the small smile for whatever the artist is. It's unbelievable, right? And a year later, also I look there. It's like thousands and thousands of views. Like where did that come from? All of a sudden, it's like I call it the slow burn effect. You know what I mean? It's like you like the lit. Right. It's slow. And at some point, it's going to happen. And I think. This is the kind of music right. where you invest it. And I, I really would hope to say this, you keep it on. You don't just wait for pockets of time that maybe you write a song or two here and there and you put it in the bank so you have enough so you can keep music like just coming out while you're doing other projects because... Well, right, well, that's, really that's, that is the... that That is, no, there's no question. I By the way, I do have two other little projects happening that with some other vocalists too that were, they're not quite formed yet. But so I'm always doing something to keep you know, creativity. I love to write. I love to record. So I'm always doing something. And then now that we did this one, and Gerard is a major factor in contributing to a lot of these initial ideas, he, you know, he has been, we already started the next one. We've already started a couple of things, a couple of, we have three things already started geared towards enough, doing one of these again. So when, whenever that is, whenever they're done, we'll, we'll do it. So excellent. That's cool. Where can people see you? And where can people get the album this year? People, so the album will be on all streaming platforms. Uh, it'll be, it's, you know, I have a distribution service that'll put it on everywhere, all the 
the usual suspects. Spotify is my probably home base. And if you need Adam Holland Music is a place where you can actually see all the things. It takes you everywhere I need to go. And it um, is an email address there. You can reach me if you need to. I mostly post things. I live mostly on Instagram, which does end up going to a Facebook, but I don't really I don't really interact that much on Facebook. But everything you can post it at one time, it goes to a few places. But if you need to reach me, send me an email through my website or hit me a direct message on Instagram. It's Adam Holland Official on Instagram, Adam Holland Music on my website. Excellent. And what are you doing to see you playing? What are you touring? We want to see you play. Uh, we're we're gonna we're going. It's a good question. We're starting. We've been out a couple of times already this year. We've been out. We did yeah. we did a great show. We did the Super Bowl. We played a, a pre Super Bowl party this year, which was one of the coolest gigs we've ever done. It was really fun. I enjoyed it. We did a Pepsi pre game party at the House oh, nice. of Blues, and it was really oh, wow. cool. I'm not gonna. It was real. It was a good one. It was definitely one of the better ones. Uh, then we start our sort of run through the summer. Uh, next week, March 28th is the first show in Florida, Avon Park, Florida. Then we go some East Coast stuff. We do the Midwest. We're doing a cool show in Branton. I have never played in Branton, Missouri. We're doing a retro mania festival in, I think it's late August. Um, who's on that one? That's um, Vince Neal, Tom Kiefer. Uh, a bunch of and by the way tiffany a lot of all different talk about 80s there's a full yep. spectrum of 80s type music he heavy to pop, pop and there's yeah. also other kinds of attractions it's a multi-day multi-day event it's pretty cool a lot of like 80s it's a full-on 80s type of festival but you can do that you we, can mix um, music from the 80s together though you can't do that with other genres right you can't do the 90s right, which pop and doing, music. you will not do that 80s you can do that and everyone's like i like a bowl you know, no, it's, it's, but they did, a, they're doing, it's cool. They're calling it retro many. It's a cool little thing. So then we're going to, I think there's talk about, we, we've been going to, you know, South America every year. We do a, a trip down there, which has been a great part of our, our little world that happens in the fall. And I don't have the dates yet, but that is, I hear, I hear, I hear you know, rumors of that. Um, we're doing a couple of cool little festivals in the Midwest somewhere. You know, all this is on my website and it's on Steve Ogieri's website and our, all our Instagram, all these dates. There's a, you know, there's a, we just posted a whole slew. So we, and then Steve is always doing some things with Brett Michaels. He does stuff with Lou Graham. So it's a big mixture of stuff. We, we keep just busy enough, the, the perfect amount of busy. I always say it's, <laughs> it's not too busy, but it's not, it's not quite, it's a good amount. So it keeps, us I think it's good. me and Steve, this is last year with Steve doing Lou Graham. I think Lou Graham's cashing in his chips at the end of this year. So I'm like, he's, you he's, know, I've heard that, but I've heard that many times with Lou. We've played with Lou and I've played with Lou also. We played and I always hear he's retiring and then, you know, I know. he's, like he's saying it again. He's saying it again. Yeah, and he, I think, I think he's, I think he's starting to feel it. Though. I'm starting to hear it in his, in his in this his is, voice, when he says he wants to, not, not his singing voice, I'm hearing it in his regular voice, like, I'm tired. I see, like, I see. <laughs> I'm Listen, feeling he, it from him when he talks. What's nice, though, I, I think they, is it official they are going to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Is that, I are they, so, or are they so. proposed to be? So. But they, they, I hope they do. I hope they so, deserve too. He's, it. he's a legend. They all, they're all legends, and I think he's a legend. Right, totally. His voice set a tone for rock. I mean, he just, every song you hear, you think about growing up, it's, you know, it was a jukebox music. It was the best. Right. No, no. We actually did. Steve did a multi singer show with him and I played with them during the summer. So his voice, like, so when he first started doing some solo stuff, he, he, he's not a secret. He had some health issues. So he yeah. sounded okay. Not, but he's only gotten healthier and his voice has sounded a lot better yeah, recently. So he's really that's sounding better. good. So that's why when you say he's retiring, I'm, not, I'm like, wow, I'm not sure. I think he's going to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and, he may, he may be busier than he wants to be, I think. <laughs> That's my feeling. I hope it lets we'll him be some more selective with bigger gigs. Yes. And he can be he can get more rest between them so he can enjoy. Yes. Like, I, I say all, all artists at this. I think your last, you guys, is, I, I, I'll end with this. I think most most careers of a band, if you're lucky, if, you, if you're like a lifetime musician, there's like three phases. There's the first phase, like the first 20 years, 15, roughly. You're really trying to you you just like you're sleeping in a laundry mat like a Brett Michaels story. Right. You're you're, you're right, putting right. your time in. And then you get the right. breakout years. And then and you and during that towards the top of that end of that period is when you start to make it, make it big. Then you get the other the middle team. Like you got like the weird you have success or or you're still doing it good, you're healthy or whatever, whatever it is, but the industry goes down. There's 
It's the ebb and right. flow of your career. Then there's a part where right. all of a sudden your fan base is leveled out. In fact, you've gotten more. Your fans now are economically at a point now where they go to shows and bring their kids, which is our right. age groups now. When people are saying, right. I'm seeing my grandkids now. So then there's, then there's a different um, value of, of um, consumer because now they have back to having extra money again, which a lot of people didn't have in their in-between years when the bands were having the lean times of the grunge because a lot of those people were working right. at Kiss. So now this is the second, it's third good, part. It's I think point. It's, got, it's like the legacy years where now everyone's got extra money in their pockets. The old time fans are back. You survived it. You're established. People know what they're getting. You have a little bit of wiggle room to do stuff. And now you, it's like a victory lap mostly. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying it's all easy, but I'm saying you know who you well, are. Listen, and, and, right. and that's the best for an artist. This is a, yes. this is a no, this 20 think, years, you know, a big victory think, lap. You know? Understood. Like, listen, look at, I mean, I think Def Leppard may be more popular now than they ever were. It's a, good oh, yeah. for the, the, incredible. They're playing bigger places than they ever did when they were like in their heyday. Same as Journey, same as uh, Brett Michaels too. He's out there yeah. like, it's an, unbelievable, you know? I'm going to tell you, I got, um, if you had me come so down I, to, see, to see, see them and I saw Brett, I saw Brett, I saw Poison back in the early, uh, you know, early, early, early days. Mm -hmm. No, I saw him a long time ago and I saw a lot of bands, obviously. And Brett sounds as good because I actually saw him at the stadium because I saw him, I, I'd never seen Def Leppard and that's what I wanted to see once oh cool and so i said so my wife got tickets for the stadium tour to see Def Leppard. that was my big thing i'd never seen Def Leppard. and um i'm gonna tell you they came out and this would give a band them props too they opened this it's a stadium full of rockers right. nowadays they come out filling the stadium you know their first song they do is a brand new song off their album talk about Def how Leppard. awesome is that yeah they did a new song off their new single off their yeah. album you know at that point the pressure to just do all hits and they've got them. They did right. like I did a couple of new songs. They literally opened with a new song. They did. And how awesome is that? Right. That is to me. That is that is like the, the top of even if you're not into Def Leppard. To have the the, the, the cojones to go out and do that in a stadium, a right. new song when it's like a, a, a. It was awesome that they did that. That's good. I'm you know? glad. I happen to like that new song they opened with. I forgot what it's called, but it's a great yeah. song. It's I think a, it's a good it sounds album. Sounds like reminiscent of old. It's but great. It's a good album. Album, I love that album. I think they did a great job. So yeah, they're, I, they're I enjoyed good songwriters. The new set single is great. Yeah, they, I, they, I agree. They're, they're incredible. They, they are they are where they are for a reason. They, they didn't get there by accident. They're smart guys and talented. They're nice. Guys. I think everyone here they're really nice too. They're, they're really laid down to earth. They know. Yes. But they've accepted it and they got that legacy thing where they're very comfortable. They can just be who they want to be, and they've accepted it. And I'm gonna tell you, most most people from that genre, most the artists that you think we see stars, are the nicest people ever. And you know that from working with them. They're the most laid back. They're nicer than some of the newer people play music, actually. Right. You know, and that's, I agree with that. It's important. Adam, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. You know. Thank you so much. Same here. I could talk about music and music trivia all day long. I, pre I like. Good. I love. I like how you steer the conversation into some good music history, and take it to the future. It's a good. I like how you steer the ship. So I, I love your podcast, yeah, thank and you. thank you for having me on a second time. And appreciate well, we'll, it. We'll, we'll be looking forward to the third time. So. Get some I, more I stuff look, together. I am as well, man. Uh, you got, got it. Got my email. All right. All right Take brother. care. Take care.